So let's get started with our chat about the diagnosis of autism with adults. It's really important to understand that every autistic person is different and every autistic person has their own individual challenges and strengths. It's a spectrum. It's not linear, so it's not a line. It's look at it like a color wheel of infinite colors. There isn't one autistic person that's the same as another autistic person. In addition to that, women tend to present differently to men and adults present differently to kids. It's complicated. And I guess that's because in general, adults can typically show more subtle signs than say kids being assessed. Of course, the issue here is that many adults have gone and still go undiagnosed or misdiagnosed. And this is a real, it's a, it's, in my opinion, it, it's an epidemic and there's almost a lost generation of autistic kids who are now adults like myself, who either are now coming to a realization or are being misdiagnosed and yeah, and it's draining and tiring and I get it. So hopefully this video will help. There's also some recent discussion that more women are being diagnosed as autistic than men at the moment. And they are putting that down to things like, well, those women being diagnosed autistic were originally misdiagnosed with things like OCD, ADHD, or eating disorders much earlier in life. So they could have been diagnosed autistic much earlier in life, but they were misdiagnosed with other things. And therefore they're coming to a genuine diagnosis, a recognition they were born autistic much later in life. And therefore there are, seem to be more women than men being diagnosed. And that also makes sense on the premise that the ratio of say boys to girls being diagnosed is still disproportionate. So it makes sense that more women are going to slip through the net than men. Although I did, so go figure. Just a brief disclaimer, this video is clearly in no way a diagnostic tool. You should not use this video to diagnose yourself as autistic or not autistic or diagnose your partner. It's simply a discussion by an actually autistic guy. And if you do, by watching this video, resonate with it and suspect maybe you could be autistic, well, my recommendation is you consult with your local GP. Here we go, my friends. Let's run through some of the most common signs of autism in adults. The first sign to consider is, do you come across blunt or rude or brutal or disinterested around others? It's not your intention. This is not an intentional way of being perceived, but it's just the way people perceive you. If that's the perception you create, well, you can relate to that sign. <laughs> Doesn't make you autistic, but good, good start. I can relate to this, but then again, I'm autistic. Do you struggle with conversation? Do you struggle with small talk? Do you struggle with these one-on-one -on -one conversations or what they call two-way conversations? Yeah, that's right. I'm led to believe that people when talking to you, want to talk about things they want to talk about as well, and not just listen to you. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's crazy. Crazy. Far more interesting than what you've got to say. Anyway, that's a sign. The next sign is, do you take things literally? Are you a literal person? Some refer to it as concrete in thinking. Some refer to it as black or white, rather than the shades of gray. Maybe you don't get cliches or sarcasm. Maybe you don't get certain phrases. You can watch pretty much every video I've ever uploaded to TikTok. And it's literally me just ranting about some sort of cliche or phrase people use, neurotypical people use, that makes absolutely no sense to me. You should go and check that out after this video, of course. Another sign that is certainly strong within me is, do you have difficulties identifying, and I guess even expressing or conveying emotions? That difficulty in identifying, articulating thoughts, emotions, feelings, is a sign of autism in adults. Another sign, do you struggle to read body language? Do you struggle to interpret cues? You know, the verbal and non-verbal cues. Do you struggle to identify the intentions and feelings of others? Like me, maybe you lack a basic understanding of social rules and social norms. You may talk loudly over people. You may just talk loudly. It's not uncommon to be around autistic people and if you're not autistic and you're near those group of people talking, you may think this is quite possibly the most loud and violent confrontation you've ever witnessed and someone better call the police. No, we're just having a conversation. Another sign is that you find it hard to make friends. 
you find it hard to make them and keep them. And in addition to that, you actually enjoy being alone. I can absolutely relate to this. I have a wife and kids, I love hanging out with them, but I need to be alone. It doesn't mean I don't love them, it just means my brain's different and I need more alone time than probably most people do. And in addition to that, I have very little friends. It doesn't mean I don't want friends, it just means that I don't find it easy to meet friends and certainly struggle to keep them. But that's usually neurotypical people. That's because you can only be autistic to a certain point. Once you're too autistic, you're gone. Now this is where I wanna make a few notes on the difference between men and women. For women, this is a really interesting divergence here, okay? So it seems like from the observations and the research and I guess the discussions around adult diagnosis that women seem to be better socially. I'm talking autistic women. So being diagnosed autistic for women can be even harder because they may not be able to provide any kind of experience or proof that they can't make friends or they don't have friends or they are awkward socially. But in fact, what's been discovered and discussed is it's not that autistic women who are undiagnosed don't have those, those social challenges, they're just better at masking it. And further, it was pointed out that women tended to cope better in social situations. They seem to handle their feelings better and they seem to be slightly more quiet or reserved than autistic men. Of course, these observations are just that. It isn't actually the case in reality. So even though the women who are undiagnosed autistic tended to be observed like this, that isn't actually what's going on. So by the sounds of it, it all just comes down to being better at masking. So you can see the complexity for autistic women and the professionals that are there to formally assess them and potentially diagnose women as autistic. It, it, it's a complex situation, there's a lot of work to be done and I guess all we can really do is continue to push for that work to be done. Anyway, let's get back to more of the common signs of autism in adults. The next sign is avoiding eye contact. Now there's no formula to this. So for example, you might go, well, I watch your videos and you seem to look at the camera. Well, yeah, I do, but that's not a person, is it? It's a camera. I might not look people in the eyes when I'm talking if I'm trying to process or if I really want to understand what they're saying or if I'm trying to think of something or if I'm trying to process something and it's not usually a negative reason. It's usually a reason about what I'm doing. People can take it rude, like, how dare you not look me in the eyes, you know? Give me the respect to look me in the eyes. It's, it's a big thing. Another sign is seeming oblivious to personal space or oblivious to the personal space of others. It might be a proximity of your own personal space or where your body is and you might not realize that you're that close or people are saying that they're a bit uncomfortable in a non-specifically obvious black and white explicit way like hey i need more space <laughs> so like, this kind of i guess this lack of awareness of personal space is another sign a sign of autism in adults is also social anxiety i actually have a comorbidity a diagnosis in addition to my diagnosis as autistic i have a diagnosis of social anxiety disorder and generalized anxiety disorder so something i can absolutely relate to but that social anxiety is something very common to autistic people you may not have social anxiety disorder as a diagnosis, but you may experience social anxiety regularly. So that is another sign of autism in adults. This sign is a big one. Do you prefer the same routine every day? And in addition to that, do you get upset or anxious if the routine or your plans change or are disrupted? This is a big thing for autistic people. Do you prefer to plan things out or at least know the plan before doing something? or undertaking an activity of some sort. This side of autism in adults, I think is I'm kind of conflicted. Okay, so there's reasons why. Are you not so great at multitasking? Okay, so that's, that's a sign of autism in adults. Though, from my point of view, the logic in my brain would say multitasking is a myth. It's a fallacy, it doesn't exist. There is no multitasking. You can do more than one task, kinda, you can half do more than one task. You can do more than one task to a mo mediocre, moderate kind of level, but you can't, you can't multitask. Your brain, multitasking is in, in effect task switching. Your brain is switching from one task to the next constantly. So you're not doing any of the tasks well, or you're doing all the tasks well, but only for a microsecond, right? 
There's no such thing as mold. Anyway, it's a sign. Another super common sign of autism in adults is heightened senses. Are you a superhero? Hmm, do you? Smell things, people can't smell. Hear things, see things. Do you have heightened senses? A heightened sense of the stimuli around you. Sensory overload is what we call it for autistic people. It's something we all experience to one degree or another as an autistic person. But if you have those types of heightened senses, well, that could be a sign of autism. One way of putting it is the heightened senses that you experience are picking up on senses that others do not pick up on. So you may find lights too bright, clothes uncomfortable or scratchy when everyone else seemingly on the planet wears them fine, noises that are too loud or tastes and smells that are too strong. These are all examples of heightened senses. And on the subject of senses, another sign of autism in adults is that you're often distracted by sensory stimuli. And when I say that, I mean that you're often distracted to the point of not being able to continue whatever you're doing, whatever task you were doing. The, the sensory overload or the stimuli, it distracts you and it, it stops you. It's a break on whatever you were doing. You can't just put it behind you or put it in the back of your mind or ignore it, right? Like, like a lot of neurotypical people would do and would tell you to do. It's not something your brain allows you to do as an autistic person. We talked about social anxiety disorder, but Another common sign of autism in adults is you experience different types of phobias, anxiety, depression. Having what we as autistic people refer to as meltdowns or shutdowns is clearly a common sign of autism in adults. This is a brain response where you basically go into a uncontrollable, unreachable, act, behavior, but it's not something you're doing intentionally. You're not something you're doing to manipulate, to offend or hurt. It's a meltdown or a shutdown in the autistic sense is when the world just becomes too much for one reason or another, sensory or otherwise, demands, I find as adult pressure, stress demands, that can trigger shutdowns and meltdowns. But if you have these types of reactions where it gets too much and you can go into this meltdown or shutdown and it feels like you can't be reached and it's not controllable, it's a response from your brain, that is clearly a common sign of autism in adults. Now we've already talked about multitasking and we've gone through my whole rant about the existence of multitasking, but another common sign of autism in adults is challenges with executive function. Some would argue multitasking is part of executive function. Anyway, challenges with executive function. Things like planning, and organizing, time management. This sign is pretty simple. Clumsiness. Like me, you may be someone who people refer to as clumsy or all hands and legs or always running into people or banging into doorways for no reason, Mr. Unco, uncoordinated. If you are naturally uncoordinated, you have poor motor skills, you're clumsy, well, that's another common sign of autism in adults. Fatigue, or what we refer to as autistic burnout, another sign of autism in adults. You may experience long periods of fatigue and you're not quite sure why, why do I feel tired? Now, of course, there's many and varied reasons. Again, like I said, you would always consult your GP about this. I've probably had 20 zillion blood tests, right? Because fatigue can come from all sorts of things. From an autism point of view, fatigue or autistic burnout can come, like I talked about, from reaching your peak and not being able to deal with the level of stress or demands placed upon you by Friends, family, workplaces, those types of things. Periods of fatigue, autistic burnout, can also just be triggered by just general stresses or too much stress or too many demands or different types of sensory overloads that you experience on a daily basis that just add up. As an autistic adult, I would say periods of autistic burnout become, in my opinion, slightly more regular. The older you get in life and the more pressures and demands you have placed upon you, they're real, they're debilitating and look, frankly, if the fatigue is something you feel and you've consulted your GP and you've had all the tests and you're still looking for answers, it is a common sign of autism in adults. Okay, we've made it through some of the common signs of autism in adults and maybe you were ticking more than you were crossing out. Maybe bells were ringing. Maybe it was resonating. Maybe it felt just too real to you. Okay, 
So let's talk about the idea of exploring a diagnosis, getting an assessment. As a rule for adults, formal assessments are usually conducted by a psychiatrist or a psychologist. But the first step, and this is really important, the first step should be seeing your family, local GP, general practitioner. Clearly, they're the first person that would talk to you about your thoughts, feelings, concerns, and would then make the decision if they should provide you with a referral to get an assessment. Of course, some people, through financial reasons, time constraints, or simply availabilities, won't ever be able to access a formal assessment, receive a formal diagnosis. And those people may choose to self-diagnose. I'm not here to tell you what's right or wrong. That's your decision. I'm just saying if it's something you want to do from a formal point of view, your first step is your local general practitioner. What once was viewed by the community as a kid thing is now developing a much more sophisticated level of understanding, awareness, acceptance, knowledge. So thank you for watching this video and hopefully some of those signs have not only helped you or maybe helped someone in your life. I'm just so happy and grateful for your support. So thank you so much for helping us reach more people and increase that level of understanding and acceptance of autistic people. Until my next video, thank you for watching and we'll talk soon.